In today's video, I'll be talking about managing persons rescued at sea. Now, of course, if you have been sailing on ships, you are quite aware that sometimes some unfortunate events lead to people uh, abandoning ships. Sometimes they may be stranded at sea. Sometimes they may be stranded in a life raft or a life boat or survival craft or um, any other incident which may have led them to being abandoned at sea. In such cases, you may be on a ship that goes for the rescue of such persons and once you rescue them what is the procedure to be followed so this is what we'll be discussing to, in today's video ships masters should always remember that by the tradition of the sea there has long been an obligation placed upon the master of a vessel to render assistance to any person who is found at sea and is in danger of being lost so long as the master can do so without serious danger to the ship its crew and passengers here I must stress that whether you suspect the people of being refugees, illegal migrants, people on boats as they are probably known as, it is your duty to render assistance to anyone who has been stranded at sea, if you are the master of the ship. Persons in distress at sea should receive all possible assistance from other ships in the immediate vicinity, including by masters, crews, coastal, government shore authorities and from all parties involved in the shipping industry to be rescued disembark promptly to a place of safety and to receive fair treatments once ashore as the exodus of migrants continues in different parts of the world and the need to rescue of persons becomes even more evident as desperate refugees travel in unsafe conditions the organization is committed to cooperate in all possible ways to create an international framework to encourage states and the whole shipping industry to provide assistance to persons in distress at sea and to deliver them safely to a place of safety, reducing the risk of losing lives in maritime incidents. When we mention organization here, we mean the International Maritime Organization or the IMO. It is therefore not the responsibility of the master to make a decision whether the people in danger are genuine refugees or asylum seekers or any other illegal immigrants or not. If you are the master of the vessel, it is your duty to render immediate assistance without making any judgment on the status of the persons. The IMO or the International Maritime Organization has worked closely with its member states or countries and international organizations to ensure cooperation and coordination, which is essential and at the core of rescue operations and that responsibilities are being taken accordingly by all parties concerned. In this regard, the IMO has also issued the FAL Form 3, which relates to principles relating to administrative procedures for disembarking persons rescued at sea. You can find that form online if you search it up. It's free. In many countries, this traditional obligation to render assistance to persons in distress at sea has now been formalized by statute. For example, in Australia, by the Navigation Act 2012 as amended, where failure to meet this obligation could result in the masters being imprisoned for up to 10 years. SOLAS Chapter 5 Safety of Navigation also obligates the masters to provide assistance to any persons in distress at sea, regardless of their nationality or status of that person. It also mandates contracting governments to coordinate and cooperate in assisting the ship's master to delivering the persons rescued at sea to a place of safety and adds a new regulation on the master's discretion. That basically means that master can make a judgment to proceed towards rescue without worrying about any kind of commercial aspects, commercial fines or obligations. So no charter or ship owner should impose fines or punishments on the ship's master if he or she decides to proceed for rescue. No financial obligation should be placed on master in such cases. This is what it means. Marine Notice number 11 slash 2012 2010 refers to relevant parties to the guidelines for commercial shipping rescuing persons at sea. The guidance should be read in conjunction with resolution MSC 16778 which is freely available online. This resolution was adopted by the Maritime Safety Committee of the IMO on 20th May 2004. This resolution provides guidance on the treatment of persons rescued at sea. Basically, all these documents should be read and be familiar with by the seafarer 
to understand their responsibilities regarding persons rescued at sea. The Search and Rescue Convention also obligates parties to assist the master in delivering persons rescued at sea to a place of safety and requires appropriate proce operating procedures for maritime rescue coordination centers to initiate the process of identifying the most suitable places for disembarking persons found in distress at sea. This becomes very important because all commercial ships have limited resources. If the number of rescued persons exceeds to a large number or rather it leads to a large number of persons being rescued, it is quite possible that commercial vessels may not have the resources that will last a long time in helping not only the rescued persons but their own ships crew as well. So food, water, such provisions are limited on the ship. That is why it is essential that if persons are rescued at sea, all member states and search and rescue coordination parties should assist the ship's master to disembark the rescued passengers as soon as possible to put minimum impositions and obligations on the ship's master and its resources. The guidelines as mentioned before do not prescribe how ship's master should manage the transfer of the persons to the ship. This should be assisted by the coordinating authorities. These guidelines do not make any distinction between persons who may or may not be suspected of being unauthorized boat arrivals and make no distinction between the flags of ships. The master can only be relieved of his or her duty to rescue those in danger at sea if he or she has sound reasons for believing rescuing the persons at sea would constitute a serious danger to his or her ship and its crew. So for example, if you find a few people floating around in a small boat waiting to be rescued, but if you see them having guns, they may be pirates in disguise. So pirates trying to board your ships. So in that case, of course, you are justified. You can take photographs if you want to collect evidence and you can provide it later if anybody questions your actions. Or if you find that there are there is a huge number of survivors and you cannot put everybody on board your ship, then you can make arrangements so that they are safe at sea and wait around till the next ship or a number of ships come in to assist you with the rescuing procedure. Once the master of a ship has gone to the rescue of refugees or rescuing people at sea, the obligation of the master to render assistance should complement the corresponding obligation of the IMO member governments to coordinate and cooperate in relieving the master of the responsibility to provide follow-up care of survivors and to deliver the persons retrieved at sea to a place of safety. So here, the member states or the countries that have ratified IMO, that are recognized by the IMO, should provide assistance to each other in providing assistance to the persons rescued at sea even if they are refugees or illegal immigrants or people known as boat persons. Finally, once the rescue at sea action has been completed, it is the duty of every seafarer and the ship's crew to treat them humanely and treat them with respect. You must provide them with food, water, shelter, blankets, clothing and tend to their injuries as much as possible. You must also inform the Rescue Coordination Center or RCC or nearest both authority or coordinating parties so that follow-up instructions can be received and you can proceed with the rescued persons accordingly. Consider the nearest port of refuge where you may disembark the rescued persons at the soonest and best opportunity available provided the rescued persons will also be safe and secure there. Update the crew list and there is a file convention form or facilitation of maritime traffic convention form available which should be filled with the crew list, names of the crew, inventory of items found in persons. I cannot stress enough that you must take lots of photographs and evidence and get testimonials, witness statements from the rescued persons as well as witnesses which could be a ship's crew to provide evidence towards the humane treatment that you provided the rescued people at sea. In the past, there have been cases where people rescued at sea or stowaways found at sea later on went and complained against the ship's master and crew about inhuman treatment and this leads to a human concern or it leads to uh, authorities be getting involved in questioning the ship's master and the crew about the treatment rendered to the rescued persons. So take lots and lots of photographs and collect as much evidence as possible that you can to protect yourself legally in such cases. Do not consider anything to be insignificant. Collect evidence regarding each and every action that you are rendering towards the rescued persons in making them comfortable, safe and secure on board the ships. 
Of course, it goes regardless that you must keep your owners, charters and insurers informed throughout the procedure and the action. So I hope this video was short enough for you to be able to understand what procedures are required to be followed for persons rescued at sea and the legal requirements regarding it to not only answer exams questions, but also for practical application at sea. Keep studying guys, study hard and keep following my videos to get updates about my next video. I'll see you soon with my next video. All the best.